Welcome to the online worship, Christmas Eve worship of Fort Hill United Methodist Church. My name is Mark Brown. I'm the pastor at Fort Hill. Joining me today in worship leadership is Jacob Dishman, our director of music ministries. Today, we will be celebrating or remembering the Moravian Love Feast as a part of our time of worship. So if you'd like, you can place this on pause, place the video on pause while you go and get some bread and, and water for, for sharing later on in the service. The order of worship is found as an attachment to the means by which you are, are observing worship today. I invite us to join together in the call to praise and prayer. Do not be afraid, for I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 8 through 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who God favors. On this Christmas Eve, we light the Christ candle as a sign of God's light that shines through Jesus. May the birth of our Savior in the Song of the Angels give light to our lives. Let us pray. Send, O oh God, into the darkness of this troubled world the light of your Son. Let the star of your hope touch the minds of all people and so direct our steps that we may ever walk in the way revealed to us as the shepherds of Bethlehem walk with joy to the manger where he dwelled, who now and ever reigns in our hearts, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses one through five. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Christmas 2020. In the midst of the darkness, a light is shining and the darkness has not overcome it. In the void of COVID-19, there is still hope and a future. In the midst of a cacophony of words dictated by personal desire for power, there is still the story of God's word becoming flesh. Christmas 2020, in a world defined by political beliefs, isolated by self-serving ambitions, there is still the story of a lowly infant being born in a manger. In the reality of a world defined by chaos, there is still the song of the angels singing for peace on earth and goodwill toward all. Christmas 2020. And the reality of Christmas Eve, as we are not able to sing because of our concern and love for our neighbors, we join the choir of angels as we sing to the world that there is joy because the Lord is come. Let heaven and nature ring. Remember the sounding joy. Remember the wonders of God's love. Bishop Charlene Cameron was the Bishop of the Virginia Conference from 2004 to 2012. I had the privilege of serving on Bishop Cameron's appointive cabinet as a district superintendent, and later on her extended cabinet as the director of Connectional Ministries for our conference. Bishop Cameron has a book entitled Singing Mary's Song. In this book, she shares a story of remembering how God's love was made real in her life through the love of her grandparents. Bishop Cameron writes, about how she can still remember the smell of the nectar in the air from oranges. Her grandfather was a truck farmer and owned 15 acres of land on which they would have two times of harvest, that of oranges and that of tangelos. Bishop Cameron writes about the age of five or six, she remembers riding out on her grandfather's tractor out into the field and of the sight of the, orange, of the orange blossoms, the white side of the blossoms, and of how the trees, the canopy of the trees as they will bend over with the harvest of the fruit. She writes of the time that she went with her grandfather out into the field with the workers to harvest oranges. There were 50 pound bags, and she was insistent that she would load her bag to, the, to its fill with oranges. She had been taught how to harvest the orange, twisting it in a certain way so the fruit would not be bruised. And so she worked all day, she said, even in spite of gashing a knee, climbing up on ladders, her lips becoming sunburned, being covered with orange grit. At the end of a day, her work completed, Bishop Cameron writes, that her grandfather gently lifted her to the ground and placed her on an orange crate. And then taking a penknife, he began the ritual of peeling the orange to reveal the fruit and then putting a plug 
and to the orange and handing it to her. And she talked about the sweet nectar of the oranges, the first fruit of the harvest, the gift of her grandfather's love. It's that love that she remembers as she writes these words. Praise be to God who transforms dry, sandy ground into beautiful groves, oases of orange groves. And I would add to Bishop Cameron's memory, praise be to God who can transform a year like 2020 through a baby born in a manger. It is Christmas 2020. It has been a challenging year, an arid year, a sandy year, but still the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ is born. It is Christmas 2020. May God's blessings be with you as you remember God's love this day. Merry Christmas to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Well, as I had mentioned earlier, we celebrate or we remember today the Moravian Love Feast. We're not able to sell excuse me, we're not able to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion this day on video, but we do remember God's love through the Moravian Love Feast. I invite you to take a piece of bread as we remember the Christ, the bread of our lives, the one through whom God's love is shown to us this day. I invite you to either share bread or to receive bread this day. We remember also the gift of God's love through Jesus, the living water on this Christmas Eve. May we pray. God, on this Christmas Eve, we give thanks to you that the light of your love shines and darkness has not overcome it. Grant, O oh God, that as we remember the ways of your love in our lives, that we might remember also those this Christmas who are experiencing times of challenge, times of sorrow, or times of sadness. May your love reach into their lives and give them hope. We thank you, God, that as this year comes to a conclusion, that you have walked the path with us and we have not been alone. We pray, God, for the year ahead that it might be a time in which we are a blessing to others, blessings of your love, givers of your light. Grant, O oh God, that as we remember the birth of Jesus in the manger this evening, that we might remember the birth of your love in our lives through our Savior Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray this day. Amen.
Friends, as you remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus, do so knowing that the light of God's love is shining brightly, and know that you are a gift of that love this year. May God bless you this Christmas and in the days ahead. For Christ the Lord is born, a Savior, a Messiah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>